A blueprint for going green. Today, the Presidential Climate Change Commission handed over its Just Transition Framework. Last year, a number of studies were commissioned and public talks were held to understand the, cope, the scope rather, of this massive challenge, moving our country away from its dependence on dirty coal towards cleaner, greener energy without losing jobs in the most vulnerable sectors, which are mining, automobiles, agriculture and tourism. Shamini Harrington is a commissioner on the Presidential Climate Change Commission for South Africa. She's also vice president for climate change at Sassel, where she works, and uh, she represents business on this particular commission. Shamini, thank you very much for your time. So you've got this final framework. If I could ask you in a 40-second nutshell, tell me what it's all about. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Sally. I'm going to try my best. Um, good evening, everyone. So the framework really is the blueprint. It sets uh, the course for how we actually are going to think about the just transition in the country. Uh, the Presidential Climate Commission was set up to really advise on the just transition and really moving us from where we are today to a low carbon, more climate resilient economy. And the first step for us was to detail a framework to bring coordination, coherence to how we undertake the just transition planning. It sets out the principles, what it means. Global sector, 100,000 people working directly in manufacturing, a further 200,000 working as mechanics. If we, if we look specifically at coal mining, because that's so obvious that that has to change. Are there actually any real plans um, about how we move people, keep their jobs, but move them into the green energy sector? Mr. So Sally, yes, there are. I mean, there are some big opportunities in the climate change transition. You know, we're looking at mining of different metals. We are looking at opportunities around green hydrogen. But of course, this has to be very deliberate. We have to have plans in place in order to see this to fruition. We've got to actually be deliberate about ensuring that the policies are in place, that we upskill, we reskill for the future skills you know, of a low carbon future. So these are the things we're looking at. And of course, we're putting people at the center of the transition. And that's exactly what the framework does. It articulates the very key recommendations and that sets the framework against which plans need to be developed along the opportunities so that as we pull back on the coal uh, intensive sectors, you know, the sort of um, coal value chain, as you'd call it, we then grow these opportunities and we redeploy, upskill and move people into these new opportunities into the future. Another key one is, of course, renewable energy, manufacturing hubs. You know, we need to start localizing that, making sure that this happens in the areas impacted, and Pumalanga being one of the key areas we have to look at and mm. start thinking about new opportunities so we don't have ghost towns sitting here. You yeah. know, these are key opportunities. We've got to harness it. And you say it's got to be people-centred. Um, interesting, yeah. there was a section on restorative justice, and that deals, I think, with the ongoing problems with emissions from dirty factories, ESCOM, people living in those areas where those power stations are. But chief among them is, unfortunately, your employer, Sassel, its Secunda plant has been absolutely slammed, rightfully so, I think, for being a really dirty company. So business has to clean up its act as well. What commitments has Sassel made to make sure it's leading by example? So Sassel has set forward a very ambitious task of a 30% reduction in our greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. We've also put a very uh, ambitious plan forward for net zero by 2050 all of which hinges on us being able to unlock the green hydrogen economy, create jobs, look at new opportunities and repurpose our plants as we see them today into a future that really holds a lot of value for the country, um, along job creation, economic development. I mean, there's huge opportunities here, and we are seeing this roll out first and foremost with, with renewable energy. We've got a plan to bring in about 1,200 uh, megawatts of renewable energy within the next few years, and then we're looking at uh, green hydrogen and, of course, gas to play a critical role in our transition. So, this, so big this, plans. Uh, right. And, and a very quick one. We know that COP27, I think it's coming up in November. That's the climate change conference. Um, we know that from COP26, uh, 8.5, uh, is it million? Is it billion US dollars that has been, has yeah. been um, potentially part of it coming South Africa's way to help us in this just energy transition. But we've got to hit certain goals. Is the framework that was released today part of that? And are we on track to actually receive the money we need 
to make this energy transition possible? So yes, Sally, um, we did receive a commitment for 8.5 billion US dollars from a few um, international government partners. Uh, the US, the EU, the UK, France uh, really came together to start looking at a just transition facility. It was the first time ever something like this was done. But important to note, the 8.5 billion is just a drop in the ocean of what we need. We are running into trillions of rands and dollars for us to be able to transition as a country. So it really sets, again, a framework against which for us to do this. Of course, this framework that the Presidential Climate Commission sets the framework for the opportunities around this, which ties directly into the framework um, that the Just Transition Facility has set up. And we are looking at green hydrogen being key, decarbonization of the grid, rollout of electric vehicles. So really big opportunities that talks very much together in terms of the opportunities uh, for the country. Now, well, it all sounds really promising. Let's hope it moves with speed because we are, as a planet, running out of time. Thank you very much for uh, crystallizing a lot of very important issues into concise sound bites for us. Shamini Harrington, she's on the Presidential Climate Change Commission.